we, as a junior high school, we went out prior to Northern High School going out. And Northern High School just recently celebrated its, uh, um, I don't know, 50 years or whatever. Um, I hope it wasn't 50 because that would suggest a certain amount of age. But anyway, we went out uh, maybe like a year before that and so forth. Went out, we went out on student strike. We, uh, we closed down um, uh, Post Junior High and I really don't recall what the specific issue at that time. When I think of the environment at that time, what, what, what was occurring is that we were sitting around, we were um, obviously listening to uh, um, recordings by Malcolm. Uh, we, were, uh, we were fortunate enough to get our hands on uh, copies of Muhammad Speaks, and we sp uh, specifically followed um, uh, Charles Simmons, who is an international uh, uh, correspondent for Muhammad Speaks at that period of time. Um, we, had be, we had been blessed by some people inside the community because I think the, the impression that I want to leave with is not just the in-class instructions that I didn't particularly have, but was really the community environment in which uh, Dr. Peters and some other people come from. Um, there was a, a community organizer by the name, and I would be remiss in uh, not mentioning a few people's name, because uh, as I've sat over the years in programs, you know, largely in the audience in programs <laughs> like this, one of the uh, criticisms I would have is just so many, um, probably hundreds of people who were just critical to the struggle here locally, never gets mentioned, <clears throat> ne there's no plaque anywhere, no mention of them, uh, and so forth. Uh, and a few of them, I think, were critically important, at least to me. So standing along Dr. Peters, uh, who protected us when the police, after we were on strike, when the police uh, uh, were deployed to Post Junior High and they had orders to close the strike down, well, Chapman, Peters, and a couple other folks stood between the police and, uh, and us as students, and they really protected us, and I really mean in the protective glove in that regard. Uh, but along with that, there were community people like Larry Nevels. Larry Nevels, uh, no one ever hears about Larry. Great community organizer. Uh, he was the person who basically pulled together um, uh, Unicom. Um, and it, we had an interesting model there. Larry allowed for the young people in the community to run the organization. You know, he sat as a kind of advisor but never got out of his lane, if you will, as advisors. And this was really the first experience that we had with direct leadership, looking at the question of how do you uh, locate resources, oftentimes which meant to challenge them. And we embarked on probably about a three-year um, struggle with the University of Detroit at that time. And uh, the University of Detroit had a uh, plan to essentially put a uh, fence around the entire campus, which they have completed now, incidentally, um, put it around the campus and not allow for the adjoining African-American community to have access to any of its resources and so forth. So Larry Nellis, I do want to highlight him. Um, Marion Kramer who I met, and you all probably know is Marion Kramer Baker. She was married to General Baker. When I first met Marion, she was you know, at least a couple of husbands before General. <laughs> and I say that affectionately. Um, but Marion was critical toward um, essentially taking a group of young, largely young black men who also had, we had a secondary group of young black women, and Marianne kind of fused us together, made really some, uh, some idiotic boys understand that the sisters in the uh, organization were on equal plane with anyone else, you know? And so Marion brought a certain amount of um, a, a, a liberation view that said it was all inclusive. You know, and that um, you can imagine during that period of time, uh, the brothers, we were full of, you know, all the kind of male uh, testosterone and all this other kind of stuff. And, you know, we beat in our chest and all that. And Marion was probably the person in the organization um, uh, who, again, allowed for the leadership to expand, but put some real, real um, 
realistic parameters on our thinking relative to our relationship with uh, between men and women. And so I really wanted to uh, highlight that. Um, another person would be, um, and I don't know why this person didn't get the kind of recognition here in the city of Detroit, would be Ken Cockrell Sr. Kenny was, uh, we, we were, Malik mentioned the Black Student United Front. Well, the Black Student United Front was actually the component, this youth component to the League of Revolutionary Black Workers. And we had a style of organization where as workers were organizing inside the automobile plants and the bosses would come out and, you know, would, um, um, uh, would seek to fire them and so on and so forth. Well, obviously that had tremendous impacts upon their families, you know. Um, if you lost the paycheck in the family, I mean, that, that meant all kinds of uh, bad news. Well, as students, aside from organizing in Detroit's high schools and junior high schools, we also played a role in taking the leaflets and so forth to the plants and we would distribute them as opposed to the workers who were uh, there distributing them. Uh, most of the time it really was both of us, you know. Um, but it, it, it reduced the pressure, if you will, because in those days uh, the UAW was not uh, kind at all to revolutionary black workers and uh, were probably sitting in the same room with um, with the management identifying them and uh, you know starting the process to to get them tossed out. Uh, so th those people uh, and and uh, I'm sure there were others. I mean, there were people like John Watson, a uh, number of other people. And there was John was John uh, John is past unfortunately. Another individual who's still with us, Mike Hamlin. Um, and, in, and those people were the, there were, there were a number of them, they were the executive board of the League of Revolution of Black Workers. And they embraced us as young folks, you know. And so all the work that we were doing in the schools and so forth and in the community and so forth actually was part of, um, it's easier to say now than then, but a more organic kind of approach to understanding what the struggle was all about and so forth. So we saw that um, all the way down to the junior high school level, again, where I first met uh, Pete and his cohorts, you know, cool cohorts as you would uh, put them. But um, the point for me again is that I didn't have the benefit, like some of you all had him in college and, uh, you know, in other places. I didn't have the benefit. I wish I would have had him that. I think I would have been a more well-rounded individual had I had that experience, but I didn't. Um, but what was critical for me was that at the time in which I did meet him and the people who were around that period of time, they provided the room for people like me to engage and the comfort and the security to engage in the struggle. That's what they provided for me. And, and with that, we would not have turned out to be the kinds of people. Um, I would also end by, I would think when I see some of the young people who are out here involved in the struggle today, that kind of multi-generational safety net and level of experience and so forth, uh, in my opinion, doesn't exist for them. And so they're out there in large part winging it, you know, uh, and uh, you see it reflected in some of the kind of uh, political discussions that you have. Uh, some of it is somewhat undisciplined. Some of it is um, designed primarily to bring attention to self as opposed to, you know, the overall process of the struggle because the, the struggle is just that. I mean, it's a struggle of all people engaged to correct uh, you know, uh, certain injustices, injustices in our society. It's not a popularity contest. It's not, you know, uh, can I get a, a record, you know, uh, uh, whatever, you know, the folks are doing today. So it's with that kind of broad view and the fact that my brother came to my assistance uh, and, um, you know, I thank you. And that's why I'm still here today. Thanks.